Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new video on the channel. And today, guys, we're going to be continuing the three game match reviews for the 2023 AFL season. And in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the middle three games from round three for the 2023 AFL season. And those games were GWS versus Carlton, St Kilda versus Essendon, and Port Adelaide versus Adelaide. Alright, so it was the Giants and the Blues in the Saturday Twilight time slot at Giants Stadium. And the Blues won it by 10 in the end, but they really did make themselves earn it. GWS 9 10 64, Carlton 9 20 74. 20 behinds in a game for the Blues is not great. Uh, and they'll definitely be looking to convert against some some sides which they may which they may have coming up. Um as well next week. They got North, probably couldn't be probably shouldn't be too much of a problem, but against yeah, some teams like uh, yeah, definitely the higher up teams, which they will play eventually or may have already played or yeah, will play again. Definitely accuracy does matter. And we've seen a couple teams have already lost games because of their accuracy. They could have lost this game. The Giants, not good enough in the end. They just won. After this game, looked like it was going to be high scoring early on as well. Uh, the Giants kicked five goals. The Blues kicked nine. Nine goals. Uh, sorry, the, the Blues kicked four. Nine goals combined in that first quarter. The scoring did dry up after half time though, because uh, the Blues still did kick three goals in that second quarter. It's like a, a nice lead into half time. Um, but seven eleven at half time, seven sixteen at three quarter time. They go goalless that quarter. The Giants only kick one goal. Uh, and again, both teams really didn't make the most of their chances as well. Like 9 10, 9 20, that's 30 behinds, 18 30 for the game. That That's insane. And there was a really interesting descent call as well. That that was a really interesting call, that one for sure. 42 disposal for Cripps, two goals for Kerno and Riccardi and Daniels and Hogan and Motlop and Owies. Everybody got two goals. <laughs> Even in this low scoring game, lots of players still managed to get two goals. 136 fantasy for Doherty, nine tackles for Kelly. All right, now in a fantasy, uh, 136 for Doherty, 126 for Kelly, uh, 116 for Newman, and he did deserve the fantasy as well. Now, Newman, he's probably not an, he might not be a player that you know, but he held Toby Green really quiet. Toby Green had about five touches, one goal, I believe. That that was really good play there from Newman. Cripps, uh, 111 fantasy, 110 for Green. That's Tom Green. Two goals, three for Kerno, two goals, one for Riccardi, two goals for... Uh, Daniels, Hogan, Motlop, Owies, uh, goal for Ward, Durden, Green, Kelly, Doherty, Silvani. Two behinds each for Ed Kern on uh, Cripps. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think a lot of the behinds must have been rough because I don't think I saw 20 behinds between players. 42 disposal for Cripps. Nobody went to him. He was just able to roam in the middle, do whatever, do what he likes to do. 39 for Doherty, 34 for Green, 30 for Ash and Kelly. Right, we'll go to the tackles. Nine for Kelly, six for Durden, five for Hewitt, 24 hitouts for Pidnett, 22 for DeConing, 13 for Flynn, four for Hogan. Team stats now. But it was relatively even, 54 to 61 inside 50s. This game was kind of going back and forth, it felt like, at times. Um, hitouts, 17 to 46 in favour of Carlton. And then they won the clearances as well. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Not at the moment. Not too much. Eight to 14 contested marks are plenty of contested marks the blues did lead for most of the game it was a really close game though in the end and i feel like either side had it there were a couple of really big calls which probably did decide the fate of this game the blues should have ran away with it earlier their inaccuracies what kept the giants in it they managed to make the moment of it in round one being the crows when they left the door ajar due to accuracy this week against a better carlton outfit they could not get the job done though all right it was the saints 150th year anniversary game on the Saturday night versus the Bombers. And this game really looked to be an exciting contest. And even though the scores may represent quite an exciting contest, it was it was far from it at times. The Saints won by 18, then 14, 8, 92 to the Bombers, 11, 8, 74. But the Saints just controlled the whole game. Looked like the Bombers might come and steal it in the last quarter. However, in the end, it was the Saints who have done what they've done so well in the past couple of weeks. I personally felt like they might have been... One and two at the moment. They're three and zero with the Saints, and um, they they should really be making finals by those things. Next week they've got the Suns at Marvel. Should be able to beat them, and four and zero. They should definitely be making finals from there. Their injury list is growing, however, which is definitely not what you like to see at the Saints, especially when they've already got an injury plagued club. But more have joined the list. The Saints in the first quarter were good. They kicked the first five goals before the Bombers responded with one late in, uh, in the term. In the second quarter, it was relatively even. However, 
the Bombers did kick a couple more goals just to just to peg the margin back a little bit. In the third quarter, the Bombers started to come. The Saints kicked two goals late, though, and that, that was the only two goals for the quarter they kicked to end up getting out to a 19-point lead, I believe, at the final change. The Bombers kicked the first three goals of the quarter to go 61-61. However, in the end, the Saints just kicked the next one, two, three, four, five goals to steer them home. And uh, we did see both the Caldwell Rippers, uh, especially that second one, the floater. That that was insane. 35 disposals from, from Parrish, four goals for Butler and Higgins. That was the difference of the game. 122 fantasy for Crouch, nine tackles for Ross. The Saints, uh, yeah, for uh, Seb Ross, the Saints do prevail in their 150th anniversary game. Well, 150th year anniversary game. Crouch, 122 fantasy, 120 for Parrish, 118 for Wood. I'm going to talk about Wood for a moment here. I talked about him in the run in the round one game. In fact, I think I've talked about him in every single Saints game so far. He is underrated, this man. He is having he is racking up numbers. He is kicking a couple crucial goals. He's just having some really good games. He took eleven marks, three tackles, um, twenty seven disposals with twenty one of those being kicks, a goal. He was just insane. Disposal efficiency of seventy four percent. That's not too bad. He is actually looking really good, Mason Wood. He's one of those underrated players which can be a game winner. 117 fantasy for Ross, 110 for Phil, 109 for Kelly and Martin. Goals behinds now. Four goals for Butler and Higgins. It was the smallest this week for the Saints. We've got the job done in the forward line. Two goals for Perkins and Caldwell. Two for Phil as well. Disposals. Let's see. Let's go up to the top here. 35 for Parrish, 32 for Crouch, 29 for Kelly, 28 for Martin, 27 for Wood and D'Ambrosio, 26 for Sinclair. We've got the tackles now and... Um, Nine for Ross, eight for Fuels, seven for Merritt, six for Crouch. Hitouts, 27 for Draper, 25 for Marshall, five for Wiedemann, four for Cordy, three for Owens. Team stats now, and it was pretty even. 52 to 48 inside, 50s in favour of the Saints. But it was actually, like, numbers-wise so far, so looking relatively even, the Bombers actually won the clearances. 29 to 43, 13 to 15 centre clearances, 16 to 28 stoppage clearances. That's, that's interesting. That is very interesting indeed. The Saints defence has been their real prime part of the game, though. 15 to 11 contested marks, 10 to 5 marks inside 55 of the Saints. They led the whole game. They definitely, they definitely did deserve the win, especially considering it was their 150th year anniversary game and the Saints win by 18 in the end. All right, it was a showdown classic at the Adelaide Oval and uh, my thing is not working. All right, there we go. Showdown Classic of the Adelaide over the Crows won by 31 points in the end. Port Adelaide 13, 8, 86. Adelaide 18, 9, 117. The Crows this week finally get their accuracy right. And if they had actually, they probably could have won the other two games. They could have been 3 and 0. They're still 1 and 2 at the moment. With a interesting draw to come uh, as well. They've got the Dockers and the Blues in the next couple of weeks. Port Adelaide got the Swans and the Dogs, so their fixed was tough. Uh, the Crows. Considering they've got the Dockers and the Blues at home, I feel like it is a little bit easier for them. And this is a really big confidence boost heading into those games. Really big confidence boost. It was a really high-scoring, uh, intense showdown with six goals and five goals scored in the first quarter. Port Adelaide taking a goal lead into the first quarter. There were some really big moments, though. Port Adelaide kicked the first two. The Crows come storming back, kicking the next four uh, before then. It's a relatively even rest of the quarter. Second quarter... Very even. Port Adelaide again start pretty well, but the Crows, the ability is to peg it back. And it goes in even at half time, if you can believe that. 57 all, and then you know we've got a game on. And in the third quarter, I feel like the Crows do bring up the heat. They do kick a couple behinds. They do kick five behinds in the third quarter. That has been the game changing quarter for the Crows against the Tigers. We saw it, even though they couldn't win, but they brought themselves back into the game. And in this quarter, this was, even though they kicked five behinds, they still just show that they were winning. They, they were in a winning spot with the numbers. They were winning the numbers. They were applying lots of pressure. They showed they did have what it takes to take it home from there. And then they did exactly that in the last point. Adelaide did take the lead early. But from there on, they just looked flat. Their defence was outnumbered, outsized. And Phil Thorpe and Rankin played some great games. Rosie, 28 disposals. Phil Thorpe, 5 goals. 113 fantasy for Rosie. 10 tackles for Willem Drew. So the showdown medal did end up going to Jordan Dawson, however... I feel like there were, like, we see where Dawson is on this fantasy list, 81. I feel like there were other players it could have gone to. Rankin, 
Uh, Rosie even on a losing side. Laird could have been one. And then also Thilthorpe could have been the other. So there were plenty of players that could have uh, won the Australian medal that weren't. Dawson have it. Dawson probably still did have his big moments, I would assume. Uh, but I didn't really see a lot of Dawson, though. Uh, Rosie, 113. Fancy, 104 for Rankin. 90 for O'Brien. Goals behinds. Five, five goals straight for Thilthorpe. This is his game. We haven't seen a lot of Phil Thorpe developing at the moment. This was his game where he stands up. Every player has had that game where they just stand up. And this was also Rankin's game where he stood up as well. Four goals and 17 disposals, really important. Three goals for Dixon. He was Port Adelaide's real shining light. Power Pepper also kicks three goals along with Luke Pedler from the Crows. Pedler's had a breakout year so far as well. Rosie, 28 disposals, 26 for Laird, 22 for Sloan. Tackles, 10 for Drew, 9 for Berry, 7 for O'Lear and Horn Francis, 35 hit outs for O'Brien, 30 for Lysette, 6 for Dixon, 5 for Thilthorpe and Walker, 2 for Finn Layson. Team stats, the Crows had more of the footy and went inside 50 10 more times as well. They were getting those repeat entries inside 50 in that third and final quarter. Clearances, 50 to 39, 18 to 10 and 32 to 29 in favour of the power. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? 63 to 88 marks, 9 to 13 marks inside, 58 to 9 contests in favor of the Crows. This was a really even game. Both sides led for their fair share. In the end, though, it was the Crows that just showed they they were better. They were just better on the night. And this is a real big confidence boost for their year. All right, so Sunday's footy action does see a real hard consequence for the loser of the Suns and the Cats. The loser goes on with three. And seeing both these sides 0-3 would be a bit of a shock after, well, we expect the Cats to really push to go back-to-back. Uh, and we expect the Suns to make finals this year. I feel like there could be a lot riding on this game. Might not be great. Might not be a great contest. But I do feel like before this game, we still do know what the stakes are. And both sides do not want to be 0-3 to start the year. These Swans... Both sides have had a pretty good start to the year. The Swans can go 3-0 should they win. And that was in the Ds 1-2, and two, which would be really big for their year. Uh, and I'm interested to see how the Ds respond after last week against the Lions, where they were quite disappointing to say the least. Stephen May does return, so does Buddy. And then the Western Derby between the Dockers and the Eagles. I feel like there's some big stakes on that one as well. And should the Dockers lose, they go 0-3. Here is the current ladder. The Saints and the Pies are three and oh so far. The Swans can join them. Uh, and yeah, this is the rest of the ladder. The Crows have jump skipped their rivals, Port Adelaide. And uh, yeah, Fremantle would be definitely out for a big win in that derby. And then you can see that the Suns and the Cats both battling it out today. And yeah, that game will be really important. All right, we have three absolute cracking games here. Thank you, guys, all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So then you guys will never miss another video on the channel. Thank you, guys, all so much for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye, footy out.